Hey guys, Mr. Backberg here. This is part one of lesson 4.7. We're going to start taking a look at some inverse trig functions. Two objectives for this video. We're going to evaluate and graph inverse sine functions, and then we're going to look at evaluating some other inverse trig functions. So we're going to start off looking at an inverse sine function. And remember back in chapter one, we said in order for a function to have an inverse, it has to be one to one, meaning that it would pass the horizontal line test. Well, if we look at the graph for y equals the sine of x, we can draw in a horizontal line here, and we can see that it's not going to pass the horizontal line test. So the way this is written right now, we don't have an inverse function. So what we're going to do is restrict the domain to be between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. So I have those points highlighted with those red dots. So really, we're just looking at this middle portion of our graph. And if we draw in a horizontal line anywhere on here, we can see that it's going to pass the horizontal line test because there's just one intersection point. So now we do have an inverse. And there's a couple different ways that we can represent that inverse. We can either call it the arc sine of x, or we can use this little negative first power to represent an inverse. So we would read this y equals the inverse sine of x. So taking a look at a few characteristics of this arc sine or inverse sine function. The domain of this function is going to be between negative 1 and positive 1 for those x values. The y values we get back as answers when we plug x values in are going to be between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. That's going to be our range. And then if we were to graph this thing out on our calculator, we would get a picture that looks something like this. So we're going to look at evaluating some inverse sine functions. So we've got the arc sine of negative 1 half. And here's what I'm thinking when I take a look at this. We said earlier that our range, the answers we get back, we're going to be some number between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. Now those things represent angles on our unit circle. And specifically, they are angles on the right-hand side of our unit circle. So when we're evaluating this arc sine of negative a half, really what we're looking for is at what angle do we have a sine value of negative a half. The angle we end up finding is 11 pi over 6 down in the fourth quadrant. But 11 pi over 6 is not between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. So we need to change this angle just a little bit in order to get it to fit in there. And what I'm going to do is use a coterminal angle by subtracting off 2 pi. Now we're going to need common denominators to subtract these things. So I'm going to make this 12 pi over 6. And if we carry out our subtraction, we get negative pi over 6. And that is between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. So that's going to be our answer. Looking at example 2, we're going to do the inverse sine of root 3 over 2. So again, we're thinking about that unit circle, the right half of our unit circle, trying to figure out at what angle do we have a sine of root 3 over 2. This one's positive, so we're going to be looking in that first quadrant. And I think the angle we end up finding up there is pi over 3. Now remember, we want our angles to be somewhere between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. Pi over 3 is between there, so this is our answer. Taking a look at example 3, we're doing the inverse sine of 2. So we're trying to figure out on our unit circle at what angle is the sine value 2. Um, and there's a problem with that. Earlier we said the domain was going to be between negative 1 and 1. Well, 2 is outside of that domain, meaning that this thing does not exist. We can't do this one because 2 doesn't fit in our domain. In example 4, we're going to look at graphing out an arc sine function. So we've got y equals the arc sine of x, or remember we could write this as the inverse sine of x. Thinking back to chapter 1, if we were looking at our original equation, y equals the sine of x, one of the ways we found inverses was by just interchanging the x and y value. So this y equals the arc sine of x and sine of y equals x really mean the same thing if we're looking between the angles negative pi over 2 and pi over 2 for those y values. And that's actually how we're going to graph this out. We're going to be looking at that sine of y equals x. We're going to plug in y values and get back x value answers. So if we look at plugging in some of these y values, our first y value is negative pi over 2. Well, negative pi over 2 is the same thing as 3 pi over 2. So if we did the sine of negative pi over 2 or 3 pi over 2, well, the y value there is just negative 1. Looking at our next y value, we've got negative pi over 4. And that's just the same thing as 7 pi over 4. The sine there is going to be negative root 2 over 2. Our next y value is negative pi over 6. Plug that in. Uh, that would be the same thing as 11 pi over 6, and the sign there is negative a half. Now we're back into these positive angles, so those things should be a little bit easier to work with. 
If we plug in 0 for our y value, sine of 0 is 0. If we look at pi over 6, the sine of pi over 6 is a half. Looking at pi over 4, the sine there is root 2 over 2. And looking at pi over 2, the sine there is 1. Now I'm not going to use all of these, but some of these things I'm going to turn into ordered pairs. Like I'm looking at this set right here. We've got negative 1 for our x value and negative pi over 2 for our y value. I'm going to skip this one and move to the next one. We've got negative a half as our x value and negative pi over 6 as our y value. For 0, we're at 0. If we look at an x value of a half, we are at pi over 6. And our last one that I'm going to look at is this 1 and pi over 2. So I'm going to take those five ordered pairs and plot them out on this graph. At negative 1, we were down at negative pi over 2 right there. At negative a half, which would be about right there, we were at negative pi over 6, which ends up being somewhere about there. At 0, we were at 0. At a half, we were at pi over 6, so we'll say that's about right here. And at 1, we were up at pi over 2. I'm going to connect these with a line. And there's our graph for the inverse sine of x, or the arc sine of x. Next thing we're looking at is our inverse cosine function. And in order to be able to find the inverse for a cosine, we're going to restrict the domain to be between 0 and pi. So we would just be looking at this small portion of our graph. Um, and again, we're restricting that domain so that we can use our horizontal line test to show that we actually do have an inverse for this function. Similar to our inverse sine, we've got a couple different ways of representing this inverse cosine. We can call it an arc cosine or use that little negative first power, so the inverse cosine. Uh, the domain for an inverse cosine is between negative 1 and positive 1. This time the answers we get back as far as range values are going to be between 0 and pi. And if we were to graph this thing out on our calculator, it would look something like this one. When we're looking at evaluating arc cosines or inverse cosines, remember those range values we said we were going to be dealing with were between 0 and pi. So in terms of our unit circle, that means we're going to be looking on the top half of the unit circle. So for this first one, the arc cosine of root 2 over 2, we're looking on the top half of our unit circle for an angle where the cosine value is root 2 over 2. And the angle I see is pi over 4. That's in the first quadrant there. And pi over 4 is between 0 and pi, so we can just leave that as our answer. As far as this one over here, the inverse cosine of negative 1. Again, focusing on that top portion of the unit circle, a cosine value of negative 1 happens at the angle pi. And pi fits in this interval from 0 to pi because it does have that equals 2 portion. So this is going to be our answer for the second one. Our last inverse function that we're talking about for this video is the inverse tangent. So again, we can go arc tangent or inverse tangent using that negative first power. For this one, the domain is between negative infinity and positive infinity, meaning that we can safely plug in any real number and we'll get back some sort of answer. Those answers that we do get back, those range values, are going to be between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. Now since the range for an inverse tangent is between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2, this means we're going to be focusing on the right hand side of our unit circle. Now tangents are a little bit trickier because tangents use both values from the ordered pair. Tangents are y over x. So if we're looking at evaluating the arc tangent of 0, we're trying to find an angle where when we stack these things up, we get 0 as an answer. So what that tells me is I'm looking for where this y value on top is a 0. That's how we're going to get 0 as an answer. Well, the only place on the right half where the y value is 0 is that angle of 0. For the next one, doing the inverse tangent of negative 1, we're focusing on the right half again. When we do this y over x stuff, in order to get 1, we would need the top to be the same as the bottom. But in order for this to be negative 1, one of those signs is going to have to be negative. So I'm looking at the angle 7 pi over 4 down in the bottom fourth quadrant, where we have the ordered pair root 2 over 2 comma negative root 2 over 2. If we stack those things up and made a fraction, we'd get negative 1. But we have to think about this angle. 7 pi over 4 isn't between 
negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. So we're going to have to use coterminal angles. So I'm going to take this 7 pi over 4 and subtract off one of those rotations. So I'm going to subtract off 2 pi. Now we are going to need common denominators. So I'm going to turn this into 8 pi over 4. If we carry out this subtraction, we get negative pi over 4. And that fits in our interval from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. So that's going to be our answer for this one. Our last three examples are going to be using our calculator to approximate some values. So we've got an arctangent an inverse sine and an arc cosine that we're going to use our calculator to evaluate. First thing we should check on our calculator is what mode we're in. All of these angles that we've been dealing with are going to be radian angles, so we should be in radian mode. Now if we look at evaluating the first one, it was an arc tangent or an inverse tangent. Well there's our tangent button right above there is a tangent with a little negative first power on it. So I'm going to go second tangent and I guess we're doing negative 8.45. Hit enter and we get negative 1.4530 as our answer. Next one is an inverse sine, so right above sine, I'm gonna go second sine, and then it is 0 0.2447, close our parentheses, and we get 0 0.2472 as our answer. Last one is an arc cosine or an inverse cosine. So second cosine of two, hit enter, and it tells us that we've got a domain error. Remember that the domain for arc cosines or inverse cosines is between negative one and positive one. Well, here we were trying to plug in two, so we ran into an issue. That's gonna be it for this video. Please remember to fill out the Google form linked in the description down below, and thanks for watching.